Hi, I'm Jordan. You're watching Lamb Chop's Chop Shop. Today's episode is shocking. So today, Sparta gets an upgrade. These are the 4600 series Bilstein, Bilstein, Bilstein! Bilstein! Gastrup Storm Trooper. No, that's not right. Bilstein! Gastrup Stossdampfer! Bilstein Gastrup Stossdampfer, which is Germanese for this. The 4600 series is meant as a stock replacement for uh, trucks with up to about 2 inch lift without any issue. Which right now, Sparta doesn't have a lift, so these should work great. I'm excited to get these put on, because right now Sparta rides like a log wagon, and that's a little hard on the spleen. So, let's get them put on. Alright, for the shocks, we're going to start here in the back. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this top bolt undone. Luckily, Ford was nice enough to put this exhaust pipe right in my way. Don't drop the nut on the camera. All right, now to the bottom. All right, I don't think I mentioned it before. But these bolts, at least on this F-150, are an 18 millimeter. So that's what I'm using. If I was smart, which I'm not, I would have cleaned these up, maybe put some penetrating fluid on there. I think this shock may have been leaking at some point. It seems like it's got a lot of crud on it. That out. Let's see if I can't just turn this nut right out of there. Holy crap, you guys moved. Oh yeah, it's coming out. Dink. Ah, give me it back. Ah. See if we can just push you out of there. Yeah, here we go. So it's loose on this end. We just have to get it loose on that end where there's a stud. Other than me. So to get this out, I like to just kind of wiggle it. Wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Try to get that rubber to kind of you know unseal from the, the stud that's up there. It can kind of be a pain in the butt. Hundred and one ways to use a hammer. So when you go to install the new shock, try the best you can to keep this strap on here because this will make your life significantly easier. I've already done the other side and I'm glad I didn't film that because there's a few times I just really made myself feel like an idiot. But from what I found, at least on this particular application, it's easiest for me to put the bottom in first and then pull the top in down to meet the stud at the top. Because even with this strap, it's still just a little too tall uh, in its current position um, to go over the stud without having to physically be pulled down. When I did it the first time, I actually did the top first and tried pushing it up and I just fought myself the entire way. One of the first things you want to do is get some type of lubricant and kind of lube up these holes. Um, it's best if you don't use a petroleum-based lubricant just because those tend to be kind of hard on rubbers. So if you had like a silicone lubricant, I feel like that'd probably be the best. I don't know if I'd use KY. That may not work. Also, something else you want to do is you want to make sure you clean up these bolts. The cleaner these are, the easier it'll be. Same thing with the stud at the top. If it's got a lot of caked on rubber on it, 
hit that with a, a uh, wire brush to knock some of that off because that'll make your life a lot easier trying to get the, the rubber grommet here uh, bushing over the stud. When adding a lubricant to these, I like to put it on both the grommet itself and the stud. That way both ends are lubricated. Just thread it through that thing. It's gonna be a pain, but I think I can do it. Aha! Now for here, all you gotta do just get the bolt in there. You can put the nut on it later. That'll hold it for now. All right, now here's the fun part. So what I did is reach up here and I'm just gonna grab this and pull it down. I said pull it down. Oh! <laughs> Whew. Don't try that at home, folks. So just, once you get on there, just want to tap on this. Don't tap very hard, because you don't want to mess up this rubber bushing. You just want to try to get it over the threads. This is where that lubricant that you put on there comes in play, because it'll actually help it slide over instead of catching and ripping. So I'm to the point now to where I'm just hitting the stud. So what I can do now, in this part you definitely need to be careful with, I got a socket. This socket happens to be a 28 millimeter, and it's big enough to fit over the grommet, but it'll sit on the metal ring. And I'm going to use this to try to tap it on the rest of the way. Now I was telling you earlier that you got to be careful so you don't mess up that grommet. With this, you got to be careful that you don't push the grommet through or more correctly that you don't push the the metal eyelet over the grommet i did that on the other side and i uh, felt really smart because of it and you just slowly tap it on there once you got thread sticking out at that point you're good <clears throat> and I can feel on the back side of this thing, I can feel that the grommet is actually making contact with the back of that stud. So that's as far as that's got to go on there. So that worked out really well. Now it's time to put our nut back on. I swear to God, if I hit my elbow on this gas tank one more time, I'm going to lose it. One more. There we go. And finally, for this last one, just put this bolt back on this here. Also, don't forget to cut this strap. Alright, well that's it for the rear end. You can see there we go. Nice looking shock in there. I gotta put that boot back on it. I kinda pulled it off getting it up there. Here's the other side. It was definitely a pain in the ass. But it's time to move on to the front. The front end should be a little easier than the back. Although I do have to actually jack up the front of the vehicle and take the front wheel off. As I put the jack directly underneath the uh, the axle here on this side as far as this way as I can go. And I'm going to jack it up until this tire is off the ground. And then I'm going to put this jack stand underneath the frame so it doesn't fall on me and kill me. Okay, so what I've done is I got the weight of the vehicle 
sitting on the jack stand on the frame. But I'm also using the jack to, to keep the tire off the ground. So next, I'm going to take the wheels off. So before you guys comment, yes, I know this is not an impact socket. I have an impact socket. I just don't know where it's at right now, so this is going to have to work. All right. I'm pull this off and move it over here out of the way. Now the process that this shock comes off is it's actually pretty straightforward. So what I like to do is I like to undo this top nut first. I figure it's the hard part. I like to get it done and over with. Then after that, I get that big thing out of the way. So in order to get this off, we have to take off this top bolt right here. Now if I just sit there and try to spin it, this whole thing will spin. So I got this wrench on there to hold it as I take it off. Get that off. Now on these particular shocks, this rubber bushing is either fused with the bushing above it or they are actually one piece somehow. Either way, if it's like the other side, I'll have to, I'll have to cut it off. Now I like the back bolts. These are uh, an 18 millimeter. On this one up here is a 14 millimeter, just in case you're curious. So now let's take these off. I think this might call for a bigger weapon. Yeah. There we go. And put a wrench on the back. See if maybe we can spin it out. Oh yeah, it's coming. There we go. Cool. Well that shock is unbolted. So what we gotta do now is we gotta lower the jack down to take the weight off this front suspension. There we go. Now we should be able to just yank this out. And you can see how that grommet is still stuck there. So what I do with it I grab this and I pull. And while I'm pulling, I carve at it. Comes right off. Just like the skin on my wrist when it hits the dust shield right above the brakes. So at this point, we are ready to install the new shock. comes with stickers. Now I can tell you this paint that's on here is a real pain in the ass. So you can either try to clean it up or you can just deal with it. So the way these grommets sit is one will be on top of the shock like this under here and then the other one sits on top like that and they sandwich together just like that. Oh, Like I was saying how this paint's kind of a Pain in the butt. With the paint on there, it's hard to get that washer on. So what you can do, you can just put something over the top of it like this, then uh, hammer on it. It's not pretty, but it works, and it gets it on there. Boom! There's one. I think I want it like that. So once we got it to this point, 
we can try to put this bolt in there. So that'll hold that in place. Now that we got it that far, we gotta jack this back up. So I've got it jacked back up now. Hope you don't mind, I did that off camera just to get it done. Here, I've got this bottom uh, washer and grommet, and the same thing on the top, the washer and the grommet. It comes with this nylock nut that goes on top. It's kind of a pain to get started with the painted threads, but it'll eventually go. Now the nut that comes with the kit is actually a 17 millimeter. So that's kind of cool that it comes with uh, upgraded hardware too. Now the shock body has, I think it's a 7 8 nut on here that you can use to keep it from moving around. It's a tight fit with that paint, but it will go on. This nut's being finicky. I'll bring it back when I got it started. Alright, we're back. So in order to get this nut to go down on uh, these threads up here, I actually had to run this thing up and down with my impact wrench. Um, that is definitely not an advisable way to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's just a bad design right there. I don't know why they painted the threads on that. They should know better than that. But, no use crying over spilt milk. We got that part done and over with. Let's go ahead and finish installing this. What did we say that was? A 17. And a big wrench. Now that the threads have been cleared up just a little bit, this should go on a little easier now. I think that's enough. Last, we put this nut back on. Ouch! Leave a comment if you saw that coming. There we go. At this point, we're ready to reinstall the wheel and our shocks are done. Woo! I am exhausted. I know it's only been a short video for you all, but it has been a long day for me. I'm covered in grease, dirt, mud. My fingernails are dirty, and I am starving. I don't know if you've noticed a little continuity error here, but I literally stopped in the middle of filming just to go pick up this baby. Can't beat free. It even works. First time. So it's the next day now, and uh, I'm going to take old Sparta down this gravel road. It's a pretty bumpy road. Usually when I would go down here, I'd just be bouncing all over the place inside this cab like a ping pong ball. Just bing, 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 bing. Um, so yeah, we're going to really give these old Bill, Bill Stein... Bill, Billstein, whatever the hell they're called. We're going to give these shocks a test and see if they're really that much better. Stuntman Anthony, you ready to go? Yep, I am. Let's, let's do this. It's like driving on a cloud. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you being with me while I struggled to put on those shocks. A little behind the scenes yesterday when I was doing all that, I'd been up for quite some time, so I was pretty tired throughout the whole process. So I apologize if it wasn't my best video. Hopefully you learned something, and if you didn't learn anything, hopefully at least you enjoyed it. 
If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll take a look at them and I'll try to respond to them too if I can. These old trucks are a lot of fun to work on and I can't wait to do it next time with you guys. Until then, have a great day. Bill, Bill Stein, Bill Stein, Bill Stein, shocks. Ha <laughs> ha.